Okay, for those joining this live stream, we are trying to finalize aspects of uh, chemical computation for the upcoming version of Wolfram Language. So, we are starting off with where should we start? Should we start? Um, Let's see. So, I was looking at it and I was thinking. Okay, who, who has gone through this? Uh, has, has Michael gone through these or not? We haven't gone through this. We went to a couple of uh, individual ref pages yesterday. Okay. So you haven't gone through this particular one? I haven't gone through the guide page, no. Okay. But, but so what would you like me to go through? So if you look above, I was, when I was reading this, I was looking at that table and I found the table, uh, the table followed by, or following atoms can be specified in the following forms. I found it to be slightly confusing the, uh, the uppercase S Y. And so my thought was that the sentence, the second sentence in the notes and usage could uh, take the place of the table. So atoms can be entered as atomic symbols, atom objects, or as either an element or isotope entity. No. Okay. I mean, we can say, we can do something like this, um, where we have Again, I don't know whether you got this straightened out. Who who is here for who is doing project management stuff here? I'm here, Andrea. Okay. But typically, we don't give tables for arguments. When the arguments are diverse like this, I think we can and do. I think it will be clear for, clearer for people if we do this. Look, it'll be most people will just look at the examples anyway. I'm looking for the special text. Oh, it's because it's in the wrong place here. Um, okay, so are you confused because of the capital letter? So I showed that to a couple of people and they said, what is Psy? Was okay, have you not get so, a simp or something? Yeah, why not? S-Y-M. I think this is reasonable. And as of right now, when you do template input. Oh, by the way, this isn't, this isn't, you can specify, can't you just give an integer there for an atom? You can. It's okay, not, so why aren't we not saying? the preferred, preferred way to do an entity. Element data takes an integer, um, an entity value, entity takes the integer for, for courtesy, I believe. But I also would be a little bit reluctant to document this because we so often need the, uh, Atom indices, people might actually get confused. Okay. Let's see. And one thing when you format an entity like that entity isotope, the isotope becomes a link to the interpreter page. Uh, I discussed the... it's a discussion with Ellen on the control. Okay. So okay. that will right. it should go to it should link to yes. the entity. Yes. Okay. All right, now we've done the post-processing on the documentation. Okay. Represents. So there was, the point was that no. uh, those two forms are oh, constructor forms. Oh, okay, fine. Okay. Okay. You don't have to say this. You don't have to make a marketing point about this. I mean, it always converts, always evaluates to the form that. I mean, technically only when it can. Like, molecule of, a, of random junk will not do anything. Okay. Well, then you should say that. Evaluates if possible. Um, so I think... Then the, then the second one can go when you want your table. Yes. Okay. 
Okay, should we talk about valence, uh, you know, covalent bonding and all that kind of stuff? No. <laughs> so the molecule page hopefully will yeah, have one but, of uh, you know, You know, listen, listen. Okay, hopefully Michael will fix these things, but but we'll return true from molecule Q. That's not just the, not the right. Molecule Q will give true on valid molecules. Molecule Q of mol will give true when, I don't know why I was saying that on a molecule page. I, I, I think it's important because like, if you have something with head molecule right, okay, okay, and you want to good. test, it is a sensible okay. one. Well, it gives, gives true only if mol corresponds to a valid molecule. So that last form there, molecule of mole, you're not giving that in the in the in the thing at the top, which is also wrong, I think. Get what so, I'm saying? So the uh, that form. Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand this because you've got molecule of atom comma bond, you've got molecule of a molecule. Only atoms with indices ID from molecule. So that's a different form of molecule than this. Yes, it's it's like the uh, um, it's performing the action of subgraph in this case. Okay, we should say type here. So wait a minute. So we've got a different form here, which is molecule of molecule, comma, blah blah blah, right? Yeah, which is a different form. That's this case here. And then I'm gonna switch here in a moment to, to looking at some other things. Okay, so what does that give? Okay, why on earth would we not reference chemical chemical data here? Because I was I was not being conclusive include or ah yeah, yeah so it's not yeah. right yeah okay the uh, others are not yet done okay all right fine okay what will be most useful for me to do shall I try and clean up the guide page? So I have a couple of open questions on. Okay, well, fine. So let's go. Let's go. Go to the open questions. Sorry, I shouldn't have gone in this detail. No, no. Uh, so it's good. Uh, we uh, there's a couple of open questions on molecule value, and then I think we should look at molecule plot, atom list, bond list, those things. Okay. What? Well okay. Um, that's certainly not the second thing there. No, it's not. Bob and I were talking that there should be a, a, a perhaps sections here to, to um, uh, separate these things. And so that would go under molecule. Mod uh, so, so there's a whole section on the graph guide page about graph modifications. And so we would do something similar. Well, no, look, look, let's, um, okay, so first we have molecule representation. Okay, so then we've got atom and bond, probably.
Okay, now we probably want the testing functions. Um, oh, actually, we need the include hydrogens somewhere, don't we? So the, oh, so actually, the first what, line what about, all the options for the molecule or the, what, what, all the names. Stereochemistry elements, okay. The representation. Um, Okay, so here we would have include hydrogens. Now, what's that for? That's is that only for output, or is that for input also? Do you understand my question? Right. Um, so it's for it's representation. A, it's a constructor option. You give it, and the, what you get back doesn't have that option in it anymore. If that answers. Okay. That. Okay, so so what should this say? Whether to include, whether to treat, whether to implicitly add hydrogen atoms for unsatisfied bonds or something? I might say unfilled valences. Okay. Okay, so then we've got um, uh, stereochemistry elements and atom coordinates, right? Yes. So atom coordinates would be um, specif explicitly specify coordinates of atoms in a molecule. Is that correct? Right. And so there I would specify that it's three-dimensional coordinates. If we, the 2D coordinates yep. from the diagram are... Uh, yep, yep, yep. Okay. All right. Okay. So now, stereochemistry elements. Right. So we rewrote the... Uh, the usage message for that just last night. So it should be fairly decent or. I mean, is... Okay. Okay. Do we want to say anything about No. Okay. All right, that's those things. So now we have um the things that test structure basically. So it would be molecule equal, molecule Q. Well, first molecule things Q. like bond. Well, what about bonds and atom list and so on? Uh, molecular structure. So that ends up being, I would think, this thing's like atom list. That there. Right, probably as well as uh, fine molecule substructure, unless we want to have a separate section for uh, patterns and such. We do. Okay. Um, okay, so then we've got bond Q and molecule Q. Test for a valid molecule. And then I think we want bond Q. Is bond Q our only other one of these? Yes, yes and, unless, so if we don't count molecule equal in this group. 
I don't think we should. Um, okay, but what about connected molecule Q and things? So those are, okay. Um, okay, so next we have vasilization. For which we have molecule plot, molecule plot 3D, right? Yes. Okay, what can we say about this? We don't have molecule graph anymore. Uh, we can't hear you, Bjorn. We don't have molecule uh, graph anymore. Yeah, it's right here. Right, so that's the, the graph-related functions, right? The, uh, but it's also visualization or not? No, it's not. Okay. It's for computation. Okay, so this is going to be, okay, so what should we say about molecule plot? So produces a, um, a two-dimensional structure diagram of the molecule. 2D molecular structure diagram. So how is that optimized? Can we say something about how it's optimized or how it's created? I mean, is it, is it like, is there a unique one of these? I'm not sure I understand. No, most chemics that don't have a unique one. How does it decide which one to to do? So, so uh, where to place the atoms and whatnot, like what di <laughs> how to make the diagram? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. I mean, so it it, it uses something like the the spring embedding, but except knowing okay. that we we have preferred bond angles, uh, things like. Um, with, automa with al allowing automatic layout. With, with automatic layout, allowing automatic layout. Okay, so 3D, what should we say here? 3D, say so, to, go so ahead. Like, so the, there's a model, you wanna say something about it, that it's a model, I don't know, Bob? Okay. Um, what well, is Bob there? See. Bob? He might be. Sorry, I thought I had just unmuted myself. Yes, I'm here. Uh, okay, so what 3D molecular structure, 3D molecular representation, or what, what should we say here? Uh, 3D molecular representation. Um, Based on a model. Based on, yeah, based on a model. I'm just trying to think of the right model, to the right words for that, which generally is the well, distance. Well, why is this method. show, this shouldn't be this way. That should be include hydrogens, right? That's not a string option. Please don't use a string option. There aren't, there shouldn't be string options, right? Okay, right, right. So we had originally had been thinking that show hydrogens was a separate thing from include hydrogens, but now there's no reason that... Uh, Molecule plot can't take and in, include hydrogens to mean show hydrogens. Okay, so you'll deal with this. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so go ahead. So, uh, molecular structure visualization. Yeah, 3D molecular structure visualization or 3D molecular rendering of. Um, 3D molecular rendering based on energy minimization model or something. Distance geometry, I think, is probably what we want to say at this point, because that's... Does based on a chemical model. Based on a chemical model is best, yes. Right, because molecule plot 3D um, doesn't have to compute the coordinates. If you no. give it a molecule that has them already that you brought in from some file, it's not going to, yeah. have to resort to anything. So it would be based on... Well, so so I'm saying with automatic layout here, so we can say 
uh, with automatic physics computation or something. Um, so automatically generated. Yes, automatically generated 3D coordinates, 3D atom coordinates, if necessary. I was saying with, so it's like a, an optional feature. So on the live stream, people are asking, what if I want to search for molecules that will bind to certain sites on a given enzyme? Can this be computed? Well, not directly, right? I mean, you can do that by, by knowing a particular structure that you want to find, a particular molecular structure that you want to find, right? Right, and so people then would often start with a big enzyme and look for molecules that have the right shape, and that's a direction we can move in the future. Um, but then... Yeah. Can a given yeah. molecule bind? Is a given molecule synthesizable? Is radioactivity model? Well, we have isotopes at least. We have all kinds of stuff, for, but no, the answer is no. The, not yet. Maybe we can use our automated theorem proving technology to be able to figure out synthesis pathways. That would be a lot of fun and not yep. completely crazy. We've got good technology for that. Okay, so now here, um, Uh, generate a graph, generate the graph, get get the graph, get a graph representation of the bonds in a molecule. Is that right? Do we want to somehow mention that we're annotating the graph with all the properties, the, the vertices and edges? Get an annotated graph of the bonds in a molecule. Bonds and atoms. Or atoms and bonds. Okay, so now we got connected comp molecule components, connected molecule Q. Test whether A molecule object represents a single connected molecule. This seems a little bit circular. Okay. Well, what should it say? I feel like the word connected has to refer to bonds. Okay. Test whether A molecule is connected with bo via bonds or something? It represents a single covalently bound. Yeah, something like this. Yeah. That's for a single covalently bound structure. Molecule. Structure? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, next. Connected molecule components. Give a list of independent covalently bound structures. Is that right? Yes, that would be right. Okay. All right, we've done those. Uh, we've done those. We've done those. Done those. We've done those. Okay, so do we do molecule value next? What does molecule value allow one to compute here? So a wide variety of computed properties. Can I compute the boiling point? It's not the property of a molecule. It's right. true. We've been through that before, okay. Yeah. So uh, it also returns inherent properties. Uh, you know, something like the atom list. Okay, but, but does it compute things that are require physical computation or does it merely compute structural properties of molecules? Um, no, it does, like the distance matrices and related things. 
go. Right. And uh, it's not unreasonable that we would in the future have a computed boiling point uh, property. There are a couple of models that allow you to compute the boiling point from a structure. Yeah. But we can get something like uh, molecular volume or surface area right now. So those would be, I think, one would consider a real computed property. Okay. Or well, expedite sizes, like a diameter or something like this. Yeah. And, and uh, the MMFF energy, for example, that's also computable. Okay. Okay. So here we've got... Um, find structural or computed properties of molecules. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now um, the next step here is this molecule matching. And then molecule modification. What's molecule property? It's like entity property. It um, so it represents an operator form. You can lump together the uh, um, any qualifiers into the property. Okay, so find structural. Find structural. Find values of structural or computed properties of molecules. Okay, so. Then the next thing is molecule property, which is symbolic representation of a molecular property. Is that right? Yep. Yes. Okay. So next we have probably molecule equal. What does that do? So it tests for uh, equivalence of molecules. Is equivalence the perfect word? Well, no. So I mean, so it has uh, comparison is a better word here because it does have okay, well, several string valued uh, same tests. All right. Test for molecular, or well, compare, test for molecular equivalence with various criteria. So that's a function that I considered naming molecule isomer Q, but I think equal just sounds, sounds, uh, sounds better. Well, is it right? I mean, is that right, the right thing? Because is it, you know, it sounds like it's very mathematical. I mean, equal would... Um, We decided that, so we at one point thought molecule same, but uh, equal equal versus same in the language implies computation. Equal can do computation. And so that's why we, we liked it better than molecule same. And same implies uh, bite-wise equality, which we're not you know really what? trying I, to I, do. Here. I would think it should be molecule equivalent. Or molecule equivalence. I think molecule equal is really weird. And so it couldn't be equivalent Q because it, it is guaranteed to return true or false. Then that's what it should be called. That's what it should be called. Yeah. Yeah, I could Let's change it. Okay. Um, What should we call this? Molecular property computation. Uh, molecular structure computation. I don't know what that really means. I mean, it's really a graph. Those are graph the, things. Yeah, but were, yeah. I think kind of what is under it seems to represent it, but on its own, one probably has a different idea of what molecular structure computation means. Okay, fine. I agree. We need to. Okay. So hold on. So let's say molecular graph computation. How about that? 
Is so that we, useful? We don't like the word comparison in this case? No, but it's not just comparison. We're going to put other properties down here. We, the next thing we have to have is this fine molecular substructure, molecule right. contains Q and so on. Well, let's let's put it down molecule contains Q next. Test whether a molecule contains a specified structure. Is that right? Yes. This should say something. Is this graph based molecular computation? I mean, this is basically our. But not all. Okay. I mean, it's structure computation, right? That's what I wrote before. And I wrote but I feel like that on its own, you think on something else. Yeah, Michael's right. I think I it's stuff to do with 3D geometry and so on. Right, okay, so it's fine molecular substructure. What what do we say about that? Let's see. Um, so what it, So if you look at the usage message for that, it, I talk about a mapping, it returns a mapping between no, a I'm substructure and a molecule. Yeah, everybody's asking for um, abundance of molecules on Earth and space. You know, guys, you're asking for a lot. We've got elemental abundances. We've had that for a long time. Generate X-ray crystallography patterns of molecules. Really tough. Um, well, actually, in a sense, we have that. In a sense, we have we have the 3D structure, So, but we don't have how it crystallizes. We have the 3D structure, so that's what you need for most for like protein crystallography and things. Right, and it'll... The Cambridge Crystallographic Database has, what, 100,000 chemical structures, uh, crystallographic structures. If the user has those data, the crystal could be built from that with the molecules in the unit cell all arranged properly and stuff. I, I've done that in the past. Still for the future here. Yeah, for the, the crystals future. Crystals are for the future, I'm afraid. The aroma of a molecule also for the future, I'm afraid. We have um, we're, we're representing many kinds of things. We've got, um, but we're not we're not there yet on representing um, uh, um, yeah. By the way, how are we specifying? Shouldn't we list in this guide page various kinds of things like edge form and style and so on? Molecular visualization. Shouldn't we list here um, whatever the things are? What's that? For visualization, we should uh, specify uh, as what's one of the questions we wanted to ask if, the, if it's stick plot or ball and stick plot, how do we specify the different versions we have? I don't know. You tell me. Okay. Okay. Basically, right. plot seams. What's that? They're basically plot seams. Right. So the you form in the future will have more. So in this spot, style is important. You can wrap uh, the. Right, right, right. Style. Um, and plot themes, I. Is, don't fully have ready. I imagine some really cool plot themes for these. Okay, so that's for the future. So are the photos now the ball and stick or? Hold, hold on, So hold if on. we look so, at molecule plot 3D, I do have okay. some. Okay, uh, so hold on. We've got style, we've got edge form. What other kinds of things do you use? Right, um, so I use stadium shape to make all of those. Uh, those, um, no, I don't, I don't I care about that. No, I don't I care about Stephen means uh, what you can use at the top level, not what you use internally. Right. right. So, so, in other words, you've got and you've got to say that in the documentation that you can put style around bonds and so on. See what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So, right. So, any color directing, direct. layout, and annotations. Actually, we should say here annotatable, 2D annotatable, 2D structure diagram. Make sense? Yeah. And the 3D is also is likewise annotatable.
Ah, it doesn't fit on a line. I'm going to leave that out because I think it's less important. I think we should say with user supplied or automatically generated coordinates. Sorry, we only get one line here. Okay. Um, I just don't want it to uh, imply that it's only automatically generated layout. Yeah, okay, that's good. Okay, so, so what kinds of annotations are allowed? And by the way, things like maximum common substructure, presumably, I don't even know what that, what is that? So that's something I'm going to push for in the next release. It was... Uh, okay, so that's not ready yet. Right. Okay, all right, fine. So is style the main thing to use here, or what? Is, is, right. Does call style, out work? Style and a pattern, and then any directives. I have not made call out uh, work yet. You should. I don't think we can. Okay. Because because of the interaction of the lines, like call out right, okay, to optimize for specify point. styles, um, color, etc. Styles for highlighted substructures or just substructures, uh -huh. molecular substructures. Highlighting. For molecular substructures. Right? Yeah. Okay, so which which things work? Edge form works, what else works? So face form would work, uh, color directives. Capacity. Anything else? That's all that comes to mind at the moment. Okay. I mean, there are obviously other weird ones that work. But um, okay. So now, do we want to mention any graph theory functions in molecular graphs? And by the way, don't forget that we need to put these on graph guide pages. Okay, so what, what will be the most commonly used um, uh, graph theoretic functions here? So find cycles, find path, find Hamiltonian path. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. And that might want to point to a graph theory page. I mean, aren't there also all these indices, graph indices, which are relevant to this? So there's index graph, right? What does that mean? I don't think they're relevant. Okay. All right. Or were you referring to things like the Keir Hall uh, connectivity yes. indices? Yes. Those we have under the properties, right, Jason? Yes. Under molecular value. Well, yeah. There's a whole plethora of those that are computable. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, going down here. Molecular comparison. Okay, so now we have all this fine molecule substructure. Can you describe what that does? So, so it finds, so obviously it finds the substructure in a molecule and returns a, an association mapping the indices from the molecule to the substructure. But obviously it needs to be shorter than that. Um, find a substructure, find the location of a substructure in a molecule. Find where a substructure occurs in a molecule. Yeah. And now molecular pattern, molecule pattern. Okay. 
that's symbolic representation of molecular substructure, right? Yes. Okay, so now we have modifying molecules. And there we have molecule mollify. <laughs> Mod so, mole so molecule why, why do you say for molecule pattern it's a substructure, not structure? So I, I mean, I like I like the sub because it implies that um, it can be a radically thing, radical thing eating or something. Right. It can it can be a single aromatic bond, which would not make a valid molecule. Actually, why don't we say symbolic pattern representing or something symbolic pattern representing molecular substructure? Yeah. Yeah. But so does it also be substructure in the molecule contains Q? Is that right? A specified substructure? No, I, I don't think so. Or should it be substructure there? I, yeah, I don't. I don't have an opinion. I mean, it does look for a substructure, but it could also you could give. Uh, it can test for the presence of itself, right? You can. You can give yes, it. and if if you have something like a, a cluster of molecules, for example, from a gas phase experiment, you want to know if that cluster contains a specific whole molecule, which is not the whole cluster. So it would support that. Okay, import and export molecular structures, right? Yes. And so I haven't edited those pages yet. Okay. Chemical properties, that's where we have to talk about either the entity page or chemical data. Extensive properties of chemicals, of, of named chemicals, of known chemicals. On known chemicals. Is that reasonable? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's that page. All right, let's look at what, what else we need to look at here. So the ones that I feel like... Uh, uh, let me just tell you. Yeah. No string options, okay? No oh. string options. Okay, so can I have that as a symbol or what? No, no, you cannot. We need to talk about it. Okay. Um, yeah, so what symbol would I use for that option? I don't know. I don't know. How many more things like that are there that are kind of hanging out there? By the way, here... What the hell is this? What's that thing? Show aromatic bonds. We, we discussed this yesterday. We know that they go away. They have to go away. Well, how, how are we going to deal with this? I mean, are we going I to... I guess in the first version, we just make the method sub options. Well, but don't... I mean, or we could have them as symbols. I'm not sure if we have enough, enough time to deeply think about all of them right now. How many are there? Jason? Jason yeah, yeah, I, 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 I do not. I'm not sure. I can. I will remove every uh, string option. It seems to me that should be a more general option, and then you can have string settings for it. I think so, exactly. yeah. I mean, like, you know, if, if one had something like, you know, molecular display options or something. You can have a whole giant list of these things. If there is a giant list, I don't know if there's a giant list. There, no, might... there is a giant list that I have wrapped up in. That's a really long list, yes. Okay, well, fine. So, fine. So, then it should be just molecular display options. Okay, so so I'll make a page. I mean, I'll, I'll put this in as a, as a futurized thing. And that would then end up being some kind of association of, of just all kinds of kitchen sinks. All right, now. Whoa, 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 what's this? Oh, that's the same that's, test? That's the right-hand side, the named right-hand side. That's, okay. I think, okay. 
Well, right, the molecule, equal, molecule equivalent Q, it seems to me it might as well just take three arguments. So it can be var arg, or it can take a whole list of molecules, but uh, that shouldn't be a problem if I just test that the last. No, not, no, no, okay. no, 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 no. If, if we're really going to do that. Um, so I modeled the it. Says there's a nice precedence. Fine graph isomorphism yeah, takes multiple graphs. Okay, all right, fine, 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 fine. Okay, all right, that sounds okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, okay. Looks good. All right. That we don't say wrapper. Just, okay, that needs to get fixed somehow. Um Hey, a point for Alex, if Alex is with us. Well, just a minute, hold on a second. Let's see, to a comment on the Twitch chat, uh, we're very interested in being able to plot electron densities. Uh, so in the next version, we'll be importing these uh, cube files from Gaussian, which contain electron densities and electron wave functions. What happened to our own uh, efforts to think about using machine learning to generate basis functions to compute stuff? Or am I, I confused? Not, I did not know about that. Well, I, I thought- No, we didn't do this yet. Okay. I think and as long people do not agree what's actually the right thing to do, it's not even clear to what to really apply machine learning. But in general, I'm interested in, uh, after version one of this is released, doing something to natively do electronic structure, just simple Hartree Fock. Uh, yes, I know it's how we found you. So. <laughs> right, right. That's okay. Yeah. So, question um, DFT. Yeah, yeah, not, not, not this. It will be later. D density function. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, yes, yes. Not, not, not. <laughs> that was so fancy back 30 years ago. It's still, it, I mean, I mean, the theorem that there's a one-to-one -one map between the ground state and the density is still a correct theory. <laughs> Fair enough. What, what about pedagogic methods such as Huckel? I, I am unfamiliar. Yes, yes, that. this will be all down the road, but we will not have this for this version. So. Okay, can somebody add stereo centers to the um, spell checker? Should I send that in? I'll send the email. Okay. Okay. Okay, quite beautiful. Uh, are these filled in? No, you haven't got no. these yet. Right. Okay. So I have a, a couple of questions on the atom list page. I believe that's where they are about uh, property naming conventions. Okay, hold on a second. We've still got this unique results right. weirdness. Okay. So is there a- Finds at most N mappings. Multiple mappings of the same set of atoms. So is there something that we have in string matching, which is that same kind of issue? Multiple matches, that, that's something that could happen in many functions, right? Because if you have a pattern, you know, how do we specify that? How do we say that? Like string match. Well, there's string cases and that you can allow overlaps. Is that what you're talking about? That's what I'm talking about, I think. Um, is it called allow overlaps? It's overlaps goes to all. Yeah. Is that relevant for this? Right. Well, yes, it would be. It would be. It isn't quite the same, but it's a dear friend. Well, what exactly is this? Multiple matches to the same set of atoms. That sounds so to you, me like an overlap. Right. And if, if it were by default false, uh, the user could turn it back on. There's an example in there where... Uh, in the fine molecule substructure page where um, 
Well, right. So that so that one, if you use the unique result goes to all or goes to false option, you would receive all of the isomorphisms between the benzene and the the ring. Okay, so let's just try this for one second so I understand what you're talking about. Um, okay, so we've got a molecule here. That's just just because it's such fun to do this. Let's just try this. Oh, there we go. Cool molecule. Okay. How correct is this likely to be? I mean, if, if we did X-ray crystallography on this, would this be basically the right shape? No. It's a good shape for a, a molecule in isolation. I see. Right. I mean, I in see. general, in a in a uh, in solution, that thing is going to be floppy, and I don't think the the crystal structure is all that uh, well defined. Right. I mean, something like that is going to be very floppy. And I mean, my experience with floppiness of molecules is mostly based on you know Teo's, uh, you know, chemis chemicals app, where you could sort of yeah. on an iPad move the the atoms around and yeah i mean i one gets some intuition that this is somewhat floppy are we going to have a way to figure that out because we, we should know that stuff right so Whatever we know which did, bonds should are be... rotatable so i don't that should be an option you should be able in the the highlighting to say highlight rotatable bonds yeah and it would be great to put a slider on them as well next version to do what i mean so what teo had was multi-touch where you can touch on a on an iPad, for example, you can touch any of the atoms and give them a force. This would be different. You you would basically put a, a dial on a rotatable bond, and the the smaller end of it would uh, rotate in space yeah, as you as you turn the dial. Right. I'm not sure that's the right. I mean, look, the, the main question is. Then probably, this, yeah. Go ahead. Then maybe a version of the new random instant. With a temperature parameter could do it. Yes, that would be beautiful. Then you would, you know, kind of. Then you have a natural, at least, scale at your end. Right. It's, yes, that, that's another application. Uh, you know, that's so something words, like simulated a, annealing. Right, but I mean, so what it would be is random instance of molecule, comma temperature, you know, uh, two hundred kelvins or something. Yeah, they make twenty, and then you see where it can bend and how much. It's nice, it's right? Nice. But but for molecular design purposes, uh, you're trying to fit something inside of a, a site, you know, an active site or or a receptor pocket. You want to be able to modify manually the, the the specific conformation to see how well it fits or not. Yeah, I mean that seems to me like something you should take it out into a 3D, you know, into Unity or something like that, and you know, move it around. Yeah, something like that. That yeah. Because you've I mean, got to be able to select pieces and rotate and so on. Yeah, I mean, the kind that of would be amazing robot. if we could hook molecule molecule modify up to uh, to Unity Link. And uh, I wouldn't be able to. We have Unity Link. We have molecule modify. Why wouldn't we be able to hook them up? I no, I don't see a reason why not. I just think it would be fun. That's all. Yes, I agree. I mean, the next thing is molecular scale video games. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Little Pac-Man molecules running around eating each other. For example, yeah, or just people with getting intuition about what happens on a molecular scale. Um, future of chemistry education. Yes. The, I think nobody really has that. Well, only people who've been in the biz for a long time have that intuition decently. All right, so now that is a benzene, you're telling me. Right, and you want that to be the second argument, the pattern. Okay. And so that should just give you one. What, what is the pattern? I'm sorry, those patterns are in smarts. Is that right? Yes. Why don't we say that? Um, symbolic pattern. Well, so it like originally had them being two separate heads. One symbolic would be or smarts pattern. Okay, yeah. Is that right? Yes. Yep. Okay. So this. The default is all or not? No, the default is is one, just because you might give it some highly symmetric molecule in some tiny pattern, and it would um, combinatorically explode. Okay, so here, your wacky, unique, whatever it is, what is it? Unique? Unique results. Laugh. Goes to false. Right. Or no, you want true. 
No, you, you want false. false. Uh, it's by default true. Because those are all trivial, basically. It's, okay, so let me understand. Are these overlaps or are they something different? They are overlaps. Yeah. So if I if I say keys slash at that, what I'm going to see is that there are many. So if I do an array plot, for example, of that, I'm going to see there are many. I don't mean to do an array plot. That was a stupid thing to do. I, what I want to do is a sparse. I want to do a list. What do I want to do? I want to just find out how many copies there are. Is that going to do anything useful? I think so. Yeah. So that's showing me that many of these things. I think you want to tell you of thought. I think a more useful one about overlaps would be looking at uh, benzenes inside of a naphthalene or uh, anthracene molecule. And that would show the overlaps. Um, a different somebody, kind of Somebody's overlap. asking on our live stream, by the way, can we take smile strings and, and return an IUPAC name? Yeah, the answer is yes. In fact, we can do that. In fact, we should put that on this page, right? How we do that with an interpreter. Right, that's how we would do in, that in, in a lim in a very limited sense. Right, if the if they're in our our knowledge base, we can get the name. We don't have the algorithm to to do it. Going the other okay. way from a name to oh, to I see miles. name to structure. We have right. Should we list that on this page? So we never fully settled on what the design would be if it were an interpreter or a um, was a chemical identify. So yes. for now, Molecule simply just takes the smiles and will create a structure, or it takes the name and will create a structure. Okay. By the way, one thing that I found fun to do, and maybe you guys can tell me a better way to do this, but but um, uh, this was just, I was trying to demo this thing, and I was, um, uh, um, this was kind of a fun thing to do. Um, I mean, is is that is there a better way to do this? Well, those will all be linear. I know that. I know that. So, how do I make? How do I, in an easy way, make a nonlinear molecule without having to worry about um, uh, matching parens? I, I just don't know smiles well enough to know. Right. So you could random. So you would need to randomly insert the number one at two positions in the resulting string, and that would create a loop. Um, okay. Yes, well, you could do that. Um, or, as you said, um, matching parens. Uh, but that almost sounds like you want to do something that's uh, some kind of depth-first algorithm. Like. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so if I just if I just edit this thing and I stick a one in there and a one in there, and then I say molecule um, of that and molecule molecule plot three D, oh, it's taking it some time. Improper valence state. Okay, well, so much for that. At position four, why? So move that oh, one. Oh, that, that's the oxygen, the carbon or a nitrogen. Yeah. Yeah. There you oh. go. Okay. That's very jolly. Yeah, it would probably chelate a metal very nicely, actually. Yeah, it could be right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All those oxygens and nitrogens pointing their lone pairs at it. The, um. All right, we really need to get that thing where, where we can get individual like metal atoms and things hanging out properly. Yep, it's so, on our list. Okay, all right, back back to this unique thing. So is overlaps a v valid thing to use here? I think it sounds like it is. Overlaps are a true or false. Yeah, yep. So should we, is it, does it rise to the level? I don't think it rises to the level of mentioning on the guide page. So just go ahead and put it in, in the, in the, in the. No, I think it's not. Right. Most um, people aren't going to just want to use the default setting for it. 
Okay, so the questions from our live stream, will we be able to plot distribution of unpaired electron spins in radicals or the changes in orbitals and charge distribution as the reaction progresses? That is very challenging, isn't it? Yes, especially the latter. Yeah, I mean, we, the modeling a chemical reaction is, you know, people have been trying to do that for eons. And my understanding is only in simple cases can that be done. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, it all depends on, on the level of theory you're willing to use and how much CPU power you've got. Right. Somebody's asking, how will our plots compare to PyMol? I think they're pretty good. Um, I assume we've done detailed comparisons to stuff like that. So I mainly look at Avogadro, not uh, PyMol, but I will, yeah. The questions about are there planned links to Gaussian, gammas, etc. Games. Um, okay. Yes, that will come later. You touched on this earlier already. Yeah. So probably not Avogadro. I mean, that's uh, that would be doing pretty much the same thing that we are doing. But uh, but Gaussian and, and games. Uh, is, is there a good transfer format? How do you transfer the data? Is it in MOL files or something, or what? So reading Gaussian output files is a, uh, a sport in and of itself. Um, but writing, uh, writing them also. Right, right. Um, it, so, I, so as far as Gaussian output files, I'm interested in uh, looking at uh, open Babel and you doing something to, uh, which already has a pretty good method for importing uh, Gaussian output files and that kind of thing. So that, I mean, that is the direction that I'm most interested in because that's my okay. background. Uh, the question, any plans for plotting zero flux surfaces, which I don't know what they are. Um, but, neither do I. Okay. I have an idea. Zero flux or or, or ISO surfaces. Well, uh, ISO surfaces, I understand. Electronic ISO surfaces. Yeah. I understand. Maybe that's or what. nodal planes. Um. A suggestion on the live stream to have a random molecule function. We've played with that a little bit. It's a ch it's challenging to get something that comes up uh, realistic, right? And what would the so what would the design be? Would so I think of it as random molecules C twelve H seventeen, but Bob thought of it as random molecule. Um, you know, uh, um, oh, there's there's a random. Those are random named molecules, right? Well, that's just selecting from the collection we have. No, I understand. Those are named molecules. Why did that not work? Have we been through this before? Right, right, because I have not had a chance. To, yeah. Okay, yeah. so that, so we just take right. Yeah, I'd like, like to be able to do something uh, for random molecule that's like random graph. Yes, and, I understand. Uh, with some distribution. Why is that useful? I mean, is it useful for, for um, basically, you know, drug discovery-ish type things, or is that kind of ridiculous? No, it's useful for that. So what So what you want to be able to do is like take, what did I just do? Oh, just take like a piece of a molecule and randomize a piece. Is that the idea? That's another thing that can be done. Um, I've done that, some of that stuff in the past with uh, genetic programming methods. Okay, so these we can get, except for the ones that have a random salts and so on. Well, there it's the poly that uh, we have several. Oh, we have it's a polymer. Yeah. But we do have that these ideas about how to do polymers and proteins and things, right? Yes, but not okay. Disposal. We we haven't given a lot of effort. We we've, we've talked about it, but we decided to put those off until uh, a later time. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think we speak about two different things. So we have something kind of for a macro description of them, not the kind of atomic level. So somebody on the live stream is saying, PyMol can do it. I don't know what it is. Maybe random molecule. Um, well, anyway. Okay. Uh, looks great. So I will push back these changes. Um, I, uh, any other design issues that we need to talk about? Let's see. I, I, I have a quick again? question on... Um, yeah, so when we, might we meet again? But And if it's not going to be in the next couple of days, I have a question about property names and... Oh gosh, for which function? Atom list. 
So it's a quick question. Are we, do we absolutely hate property names that end in the word Q? I like it because it tells we have me no, I, more I open to it lately. What's that? We have gotten more open to it lately. Yes, I feel yes, 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 yes. Uh, so I like at unsaturated Adam Q to tell me whether it's in, whether whether the atom is unsaturated or not. Um, I think it's okay. Okay, I think it's okay. I mean, I think we. I agree that it's pretty clear what they mean, and I don't really see a problem. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, and thanks for the comments on the live stream. For those interested, there will be one more live stream tonight, I believe, about geo functionality in about two hours. Um, all right. See you all soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.